I want to thank you for coming and giving this great plenary talk here. It's always a pleasure to have you at our meeting. It's, thank you for the not, invitation. Yeah, it's not the first time and we got always so great feedback, so it's really a pleasure. And I just recognized during my preparation uh, for the introductory talk that it's a, a nice uh, coincidence, 20 years of this workshop and 20 years <laughs> that you came up with this groundbreaking idea. So. Uh, it's dealing with single molecules here at this workshop. You came from a totally different direction. What do you think was the biggest challenge to bring your idea into reality? I think uh, one challenge was to change the mindset of people. This uh, wasn't easy because um, uh, the notion of uh, the limited resolution in a light focusing microscope has been so deeply rooted in the mind of physicists and uh, other scientists that it was really difficult to convince them that it's worthwhile pursuing this idea. And um, I must say, in retrospect, of course, uh, many hurdles could be taken uh, much earlier if there had been the, a bit more, um, say, say, openness towards, towards uh, taking risks. Yeah. And, um, it's, it's probably not what we would expect first. I had imagined some technical issues, but it's really changing the mind. Opening the I, mind of I think so them. because because I think uh, the concept was rather clear from the beginning and so the, the way the proposal was made it, it contained a lot of numbers and so you could see from from the from the numbers that it should work still people had difficulties accepting or embracing the, the, the chance probably because um, uh, they couldn't imagine it I think one of the reasons was also that there have been proposals in the past so there were proposals in the past that failed and so People said, okay, um, uh, now so many concepts have failed, so why should this one uh, yeah. uh, work in the end? And there will always be some reasons why it would fail, because the, all the others have failed. And I think this, this really plays a role. Um, technical hurdles, of course there were hurdles. Um, for example, initially in the, uh, in the very first day, I saw that probably you need a dye laser to do it. And a uh, dye laser, I didn't have access to a dye laser in the lab I, I was in in Finland in those days. And, so I couldn't do it the next day. So, so th this was a serious hurdle uh, to find the money to, to get the lasers that you need. Um, later, it turned out that things work m much more easily. Uh, you, you could do it now with all kinds of lasers. But uh, in those days, of course, this w was A, not clear, and B, some, the, the, the means were not available. And this, this yeah, certainly unfortunately, there's a much progress in instrumentation that probably now the application is more on the focus. Right. You, you publish tens of different applications. Is there some paper, some application you like most, you fear this could be making really a um, big step forward? I think for, for STAT, uh, the, the, the big advantage of STAT is that you um, can image relatively quickly moving things and you're not limited to, um, to detecting single molecules. Yeah. And uh, this, had, this has advantages, especially if you look at more complicated structures or um, structures that, that, that move, um, or if you want to look deeper inside a, a specimen. And um, uh, so I, I think that, that that will play a major role in, in those applications, be it neurosciences. I think this is definitely something that, um, uh, that will be very interesting to investigate. Uh, what can we learn in neurosciences with a method such as that or related methods, uh, but also other fields. And I think there's also a practi practical advantage. You, once you have implemented a STAT microscope, and you know it now, obviously, yeah. you push a button and then you get the image. You don't have to worry about, about, say, the concentration of molecules or whether the conditions are right for the image formation. It's a, it's a technique that is just based on using a physical transition, uh, a state transition in the right way. So just use just physics. And I think this is an advantage because you don't have to worry much about, about how the image is made if you're, if you're not a physicist, if you just want to use it. And so I anticipate that um, it will um, be much easier with that to do um, experiments uh, right away for people who haven't had any super resolution experience. Yeah, you are completely right. Of course, we made this experience, being mostly physicists in company, that it was much easier uh, just uh, to, to work with a STAT principle to, to mm -hmm. get this additional platform available. Uh, if you would look into the future, uh, I would be happy if you come back in five years, uh, <laughs> having an even more prominent anniversary. What would you imagine? What, what would be your dream, what you would like to see here uh, presented from scientists, from your lab? Uh, what problem should be solved? So. I've, 
I firmly believe and I, I would hope that many of the performance parameters that we have now, I, I mean the whole field of super resolution, get much better. Of course, you can do many, many things right now, right away. I think the potential is, uh, of application is not explored. So just people are just beginning to explore it. But of course, if you can image 10 times faster, if you, if you get much brighter pictures, this will again expand um, uh, the potential of application and, and, and uh, making the, the potential of making fundamental discoveries in the life sciences. And now, many insights have been gained, there's no doubt, and some of them are really important or even fundamental. But imagine, uh, say, a uh, five times better improvement uh, in speed, in resolution, in sensitivity over what we have now. This would really, uh, say, change matters even more. And so I think there is, uh, there is uh, enough reason to work on it. And since the basic principle is, in my view, very simple and very profound, there is a lot of room to explore it. It's important to realize that it's not just a technology that has come to an end and now we have a certain performance and that's what it's going to be for the next 20 years. It's just the beginning and I'm sure your system, for example, your stat system in five years will be much, 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 much better uh, than, than uh, what you have now and this applies also to the other systems. Okay, that's a, of course, very promising forecast. Thanks again for coming yeah. and we especially appreciate, as we know, that you have to go to Oslo next week. <laughs> getting right. the coffee prize awarded from the Royal Academy of Norway. And so it's a pleasure to have you here and hopefully you come back. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for yeah. this interview. Thanks.